when we box that up, it's it's getting that personal blessing as it goes out the door. So yeah. I think that's ingrained in all the people here and they're really passionate about their work. I'm Ryan Gresham. And this, this is Gun Talk Nation. All right, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. And today we are on location out in Massachusetts visiting Savage. I got JT with me. How's welcome going, in, man. Everybody? How's it going? Yeah. Um, so just right off the bat, I'll a note for anybody listening or watching this. We are at the Savage factory. Yep. So you may hear forklifts or, or whatever, and you know, it's just what we, we're just gonna yeah, roll with it. <laughs> yeah, it's just how it goes. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of fun being up here because uh, flying to Hartford, we're, yep. we're here in Massachusetts. This is Gun Valley. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, manufacturers have sprinkled their way through here. Uh, Along the Connecticut yep. River. I was, I was telling uh, one of the guys, I said, you know, there, I've, I've come up here a bunch. Yep. You know, well, how many companies are up here? I'm like, well, there's Savage, yep. there's Mossberg, there's Ruger, there's Sig Sauer. I mean, in the greater New England. Yeah, yeah, there's Smith and Wesson. Wesson. Yeah, Wesson. yeah, quite a few. Henry. Yep. Um, just and even some that maybe you wouldn't even think of. Yeah, like smaller companies. Troy yeah. Industries. I think. Yep, yep, yep. Right. They were here originally. Yeah, yeah. Or they're not here anymore. I guess. Yeah, I think they moved down south. Yeah. But um, so, JT, how long have you been at Savage? Yeah, so I've been uh, at Savage for about eight years now. I started as an intern in college. Um, I'm originally from Western Mass. I grew up in Springfield, about a half hour from the factory. Yeah. Um, so I think it was my sophomore year of college, started as an intern during the summers and winters, really got hooked on it, I'd say addicted to it, I really enjoy it, and yeah. then uh, full-time picked up and then have been working here in engineering since. That's gotta be a sweet internship, right? Yeah, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of fun. Even my background growing up, it wasn't like a big hunting or uh, target shooting background or anything like that. I, I did some like paintball and stuff like that competitively with friends yeah. and stuff like that here and there, a little bit airsoft, but actually getting hands on with rifles and handguns was, I really got my, uh, got my everything situated here and kind of got, got first hands on experience. So it was really neat stuff. What's uh, for you personally, I mean, as you kind of, you said you didn't grow up in it, but now yeah. you're working at a gun company. Yeah. Um, what do you like most? What type of shooting or hunting or what type of gun yeah, do you like yeah. most? Um, so I'd say it started with uh, kind of like the PRS style shooting and stuff like that as we inter or, uh, introduced like our uh, 110 precision, elite precision line, axis precision line. A few of the engineers on weekends or here and there for different events would go out and uh, target shoot up to I think five, 600 yards yeah. and even up to like a thousand. So that's not surprising for an engineer to be interested in precision shooting. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, right? pretty neat stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was really enjoyable, calculating your, uh, your dope and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then more recently, as Savage has gotten into handguns with our Stance Micro Compact and then rolling into the nine millimeter, 1911, 45, 1911, been doing a lot of testing there. So um, got out to the range a few times in uh, Northern Mass on weekends to plink on weekends and some of that. So a lot of fun stuff. You know, observations while we've been here, um, talking to Chris, the president and CEO, he comes from an engineering background. Yeah, he yeah. He's an engineer. Yep. And something I've said a lot over the years on this show is um, when the, the guy in charge is an engineer, what I find that one of the things that usually means is the products are gonna be good. Absolutely. Sometimes the, the guy in charge is a marketing guy, yep. and they may or may not be good, the marketing will be amazing. Yep, but, yep. <laughs> you know, like, you know, the I, technical details, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's obviously a technical details kind of guy. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think when people talk about Savage, when shooters and hunters, gun enthusiasts talk yeah. about Savage, they always kind of go, yeah, they make good guns. Everyone kind of agrees. Yeah, yeah. They, and we were talking last night at, at dinner, it, yep. it punches above its weight class, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. It seems to do that. Yeah. Um, why is that? Yeah, so I really, I think it not only ties into our manufacturing processes here that we can speak to a little bit, but also just the culture that we have here at Savage. I'd say from the very top of the organization down to just like the, the regular employees and engineers and everything like that, everybody's really passionate about the product that we're putting out the door. And I think one of the things that we kind of speak to in like our assembly cell for handguns or for rifles, we're packaging and assembling every gun as if we're handing it off to a relative or a best friend who's going on a hunt or going on a shoot over the weekend. And we're like, when we put this thing together, when we check it, when we function it, we make sure the safeties work, we want it to be accurate, obviously. 
when we box that up, it's it's getting that personal blessing as it goes out the door. So yeah. I think that's ingrained in all the people here and they're really passionate about their work. And then on top of that, just the manufacturing processes that we have here, um, they've really grown over the past 10 to 15 years. Um, just with regards to barrel manufacturing, we have three or four new automated cells with a robotic arm that's taking barrel blanks, placing them in different machines. A lot of, a lot of precise work there that's trickled into our receiver line. So that impacts all of our products in a positive way, including like the Impulse, the newer rifle, as well as our 110, our bread and butter axis. Yeah, I, that was something I saw on the floor. I've been to, I mean, dozens of, of gun companies and yeah. you know, seen factories. You guys, because Savage is one of those older gun companies and been in this location a very long time, yeah. you've got an interesting mix of old and new yeah, going yeah. down there, right? Like you've, yeah. got, you've got the high tech, you set it, you get, out of the cage and yep. let the robotic arm do yep, just watch it on a little stuff. monitor yeah and then you also have craftsmen who have been a savage for 20 and 30 years yep. who are you know they're they're pulling the rifling manually well yep. i say manually yeah with, feeding with brooches and feeding drills brooches and, yeah yes yeah. and that's yeah that's an interesting mix yeah it's really neat so i think we've taken a lot of lessons learned from that manual process and some of the older machinery. And instead of just blindly buying a bunch of new high-tech equipment and saying, like kind of buying the new equipment, closing your eyes and say the, the, the equipment's gonna make good barrels, mm -hmm. we're taking all the lessons learned from those older manufacturing processes and making sure that the new automi automated equipment is taking those things and all those recipes and things that we have for barrel accuracy and barrel life and stuff like that, they've rolled over into the new process and really just been optimized. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And if you can hear it, I, you probably can. What are, what are these jets that are flying over? This yeah, like we a have a, base, yeah, right? we have a local Air Force base, I think maybe <laughs> two miles up the road. So you'll hear F-35s, F-15s, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of awesome. Throughout the day. It's a daily gun, occurrence. You're in a gun factory <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you yeah. just want to like yell freedom. Yeah, nice flyover. Like, yeah, yeah, yes. it's, it's awesome, it's awesome. <laughs> it's a lot of freedom going on up yeah, here. Definitely. Um, yeah, the, the old and the new, so it's kind of like uh, trust but verify a little bit with these new machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're programmed obviously, they have high tech equipment and tooling, but there's always still an op operator that's checking barrels after they're drilled with pin gauges and things like that, straightness gauges, air gauges. We inspect our reamers and our brooches on a re regular, regular uh, preventive maintenance schedule. So there's always a, a physical human being, an operator that's monitoring things and checking them after they make it off the machines. Well, and they know what to look for, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk about is the the new stuff that you guys have been doing. And then we are gonna get into a, a new a new version of the Axis, sure. which is really cool. But um, pistols have been kind of a, a newish thing for you guys. Yeah, picked up here in the years. past couple of years, yeah. Um, and also the Renegade shotgun. Which yeah, yeah. I feel like I've, I've did a hunt with it. It's a great shotgun. Yeah. It feels like people may not be aware of it. Mm, mm. I mean, yeah, it's why, a really new package. What is, the, what is the deal with the Renegade? What, what do you think people need to know about it? Yeah, yeah. So it's an American-made semi-automatic shotgun currently chambered in a 12-gauge. Mm -hmm. And overall, it's, it was actually a project that I think it started maybe, let's say, six, seven, eight years back, and they had an engineering team around it, and there were some other challenges for other projects. So the guys were working on it for a year and a half or two years. There were some other hot items that came along, like Axis updates, 110, AccuStock mm -hmm. updates, and some of those guys actually got pulled onto other projects to keep the ball rolling there. And then three, four years later, that same group actually kind of reconnected and um, one of the other engineers that we have here, John Linscott, he was heading that initiative. And so it was a nice collective group. They, they worked on it, they paused, and then they got the same set of eyes back on it and they brought it across the finish line with uh, the uh, regulated gas system so that you can run, run subsonic loads as well as your three inch magnum. And it's only going to return enough gas in the system to properly cycle the bolt in that scenario. So it's really all that excess gas is being kicked out. It's a big deal because there, it's one of the cool things about a shotgun, especially 12 gauge, there's such variety in loads, mm -hmm. but to make a semi-auto work properly with a light two and three quarters load, yep. as well as a magnum yeah. know, waterfowl load, yep. the pressures are vastly, vastly different. Vastly different, yeah. yeah. And still having a reliable action that's gonna cycle correctly. So there's like the base model, there's like a, there's a turkey version, there's a, um, 
I think here there's a security version that we introduced recently yeah. as well as a competition model. So a nice variety, different barrel lengths, um, different optics and sight systems and things like that. So there's also going to be some upcoming stuff uh, in the near future for all of our products, including Renegade, just yeah. continuing to iterate, improve, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, so um, we're going to take a quick break. After the break, let's talk about the new Axis 2. Sure. Sounds good. Range Ready is where we run our classes, rangereadystudios.com. So go over there to check out the classes and events that we have going on. We've got the Savage Concealed Carry Experience. Oops, sold out. We've got the Conceal the Crimson Trace Laser Handgun Experience. Oops, that's sold out too. These things go fast. Another little, uh, little known thing about Range Ready is we will provide you a, a pistol if you need one for running a class or even an AR and HK is one of our partners on that VP series pistols available for student use when you sign up and there's no charge for that we don't rent you a gun and, and there's an upcharge it's just available for your use so it's a pretty cool deal go check it out rangeReadyStudios.com let's talk about Tokarev shotguns Turkish made quality we've been shooting them a little bit more lately and we were out on the range with the Tokarev Tar 20 and this is kind of looks like an AR-15, but it's in 20 gauge, three inch chamber, 20 gauge, detachable box magazine, 18 and a half inch barrel. And the big deal is right on their website, $329. So pretty uh, value price. So check them out, tokarevusa.com. Ruger, one of the popular ones, one of the kind of cool fun ones they're doing is the Ruger LC charger. It's chambered in 5.7 by 28 low recoiling cartridge available in an array of options for target shooting, small game, personal defense. It's kind of a large format pistol and you kind of have to see it to understand it, but it's a 10.3 inch barrel. So let that sink in for a second. Yes, it's a threaded barrel. Yes, they have a CNC milled handguard. Um, that works with M-Lock, full-length pick rail on top for optics. Just a fun, cool gun. It, I mean, the, the whole thing only weighs 66 ounces. So go check it out over at Ruger.com. So, JT, the real reason why we came out here yeah. to see you, Savage, but there's something new yep. that we're covering. And I think people, if you don't know, you should know, the Axis yeah. Rifle it's it's kind of the bread and butter for you guys now. Absolutely, it's, sixty it's percent of our volume. product, but it's the biggest one definitely, for you guys. Definitely, definitely. Um, so, if people don't know Axis, what do they need to know about the Axis rifles? Yeah, so I believe the Axis program started back about 10, 15 years ago, around the two thousand nine, two thousand ten time frame. Um, really, what Savage saw in the market, we obviously had our one ten that was a popular model, a few other um, rifles and configurations that were floating about, but we saw this kind of uh, budget niche in the market mm -hmm. right below our 110 that had a void that new shooters, youth, things like that, or someone just getting into hunting or even maybe target shooting or something like that for the first time, they didn't want to go out and spend 12, 13, even $2,000 sure. on a rifle. And so the, Sa the uh, Savage Axis actually was purpose built to fill that void. It wasn't a 110 that Savage had crafted and they're like, oh, we're gonna strip this away, strip right. this away, strip that away and plug it in somewhere. It was a rifle purpose built for that spot in the market. So the shooter was really getting a package that was designed for them out of the gate that you're just getting acquainted with shooting or a rifle that you can even build upon with a threaded barrel or something like that and yeah. pass through for different different options. Well, that's an important point that you make and you kind of, you guys told us a story about how you approach this because you basically said we wanted to have a rifle that would be savage quality. Yep but be at a lower price point. Yep. And you didn't strip out features and do that. Yeah. You started with a brand new gun. Talk about how you got all these, all the players together yeah. in one room and, and how you accomplished that. Yeah, so with Savage's long history, obviously there's been a lot of lessons learned in terms of um, manufacturing press processes inside for our receivers and barrels. But we also have a really wide network that expands all across the country, not just in New England, for um, our rifle stocks and some of our other subcomponents and stuff like that. And really what we did with the Axis is we pulled that whole supply chain network together and Chris Bazina, our CEO, will be able to speak to it very well. Um, met with some of our stock suppliers, some of the suppliers that help with our, 
um, trigger MIM process, mm -hmm. different sheet metal stamping houses for trigger brackets, or yeah. even little uh, CNC shops for some of the small pins, and have that group huddle in on site at Savage for a few days and talk about the 110, and then talk about the access and where we were trying to plug this into the market, and how can Savage take all these lessons learned in this big supply chain network and optimize the manufacturing processes to build a rifle that's affordable and still punches above its weight class in terms of functionality, features, accuracy. Mm -hmm. So really a collective effort that then kicked that off and over the Axis's 10, 15 year life cycle so far, there's been different iterations and a refresh and what we have here a next generation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the important point to make here is like, you created manufacturing efficiencies, which allowed you to get the price point um, down, more affordable for, for everybody. Yep. And you didn't really have to sacrifice anything. Yeah. Um, so one of the cool little, hey, did you knows, is same barrels yep. are in the Axis that are in the 110. You can literally, um, certainly as you saw during the tour, we have a machining line for our barrels and our receivers. The Axis and 110 barrels literally come from the same bar stock. They go through the same machining process, same machines, same inspection. Based on configuration, maybe like a 22 inch Sporter 308, you could literally have that barrel taken from a 110 and plugged it right into your Axis. It is the same barrel in many instances. Yeah. Which is really neat. Yeah, it is neat. Um, what else on the, on the Axis is kind of maybe people don't realize on the way you guys manufacture it and how you're creating these efficiencies. Yeah, yeah, so another neat thing, also um, tying over to a machine part, uh, the bolt heads for instance. What we saw with the 110, um, just the way things were processed, understanding the SAMI window for head space, for a lot of centered fire cartridges, it's about 10 thousandths of an inch, and Savage has um, kind of a little recipe that we have that's running tighter inside that window with our zero tolerance head space, our barrel lock nut system, that kind of deal, and that bolt head geometry. Savage actually optimized it for the 110, and once we saw some of the positive results that we were getting with grinding to make sure the lugs were square and things like that for a nice clean and even lockup, along with the uh, free floating bolt head, we rolled that stuff right into the Axis rifle as well. So a lot of optimized manufacturing processes and components. It's not like we launch an Axis rifle and we just let it sit out in the market and maybe put new camo on it or something like right. that. We're continuously iterating, learning from other product lines, yeah. introducing things that maybe even the end, end user isn't always aware of, but a few years back, we also updated our Axis rifles so that you're not seeing 648 screws anymore. All of our Axis rifles, whether it's a one piece MOA rail, it has an 840 screw set, even for our low profile bows, bases as well, and they're not Allen key torqued down, they all have Torx drives. So yeah. you're not gonna have any screws stripping out, you're not gonna have mounts coming loose, they're either gonna have a nylon patch on the screw, blue Loctite, you can torque those screws, I think we've done some testing, up to 60 inch pounds, and you might break <laughs> your base or your rail before the screw wants to strip, Jeez. which is pretty pretty serious. <laughs> well, um, you know, we got to go down the floor and I got to build one yesterday, yeah. which was really, educational um other stuff that we're seeing the the trigger assembly is it's a it's a sub assembly right so yep. you assemble the trigger before it goes in the gun yep. that creates some efficiencies um also because you guys do have such variety in all the axis lineup you've got i would say different flavors yeah 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 configurations and flavors yep. and depending on what people want to do yeah but because there are so many Axis rifles out there, yep. it also means there's a ton of aftermarket stuff. Absolutely, some people. chassis. And like, yeah, I mean, swapping out a stock, if you want to go to a chassis or some custom thing, mm -hmm. which a lot of people do, yep. it's two screws, right? Literally pop two screws out, slap your chassis on, and say you buy just a, a base Axis or something like that, and you buy a configuration with one of the medium suppressor ready barrels, 5A's mm -hmm. 24 threaded, you could take that same action that you started your son on or something like that for maybe deer hunting or something of that nature, depending on caliber. And throughout a four five, six year period, you can build on that rifle. You can throw a muzzle brake on it. You can throw a new chassis on it. You can really build off of that package. New from Ballistic Advantage, they're making SIG P365 barrels now. And they're featuring a SAMI spec chamber. So kind of works with all ammo, which is important. Enhanced factory specs to superior performance, lapped rifling for smoother, more accurate shots, upgraded features, improves reliability, precision, and customization because they have different 
colors and we have threaded barrels. So that's a really easy swap on a pistol, swapping out the barrel to get more performance from your gun. Go check it out at BallisticAdvantage.com. Hodgson, you know they're the gunpowder people. And one of the ones that people really like is Hodgson CFE BLK, CFE Black. Um, optimized for 300 AAC blackout subsonic loads, but it's also ideal for the 17 Hornet, 7.62x39, 221 Fireball. So you have some options on things that you can load with this powder. One of the cool things about this, the CFE contains the copper fouling eraser ingredient, originally used in military propellant, which greatly deters copper fouling and contributes to longer periods of top accuracy with less barrel cleaning time. We like this. Go check them out over at Hodgden.com. So let's talk about the new gun. Yeah, absolutely. Axis 2 Pro is what I was building. Yep, yep. So we released, uh, we have a couple new models coming out, um, kind of a next generation for our Axis. So we did a refresh, I think a few years back, maybe in around 2018, 2019, with some new stock ergonomics and stuff like that. But we've really kind of um, brought the Axis a new face here with some of the um, enhancements that we're rolling out, really bringing uh, the, the end user a really nice package. So we have a new ergonomic stock. Mm -hmm. It's got more of a vertical grip angle, angle, so much more modernized from what you've seen on some of our prior uh, hunting stocks. And it's not just a grip angle that we picked and that looks nice and feels nice in a few people's hands. We actually did a, a lot of internal studies as well as external studies with target shooters, hunters, people that, um, just shooting could be a hobby or it could be a, a passion, the career, something of that nature. We had a number of different studies to check hand sizes, grip ergonomics, mm -hmm. thumb placement, um, length of pull, just different things that you wouldn't think about when you have a shooter that's 6'5", who's a full grown male, or maybe a, a 10 year old who's getting on his first gun. So there's um, a standard length stock, a compact stock, we've got new optimized texturing in the grip area, as well as up on the forend. There's also some molded in um, angular serrations so you can get really nice bite onto the stock mm -hmm. with wet hands, mud on your hands, gloves, sure. all that yeah. kind of different stuff. We've actually, talking about enhancements that we've rolled over from the 110, the new Axis platform has a 110 recoil pad. So it's oh, something that okay. we also pulled over. The Axis got an enhancement from its its brother pro brother product line. <laughs> I was talking yeah. to uh, Brett, one of the guys that works in marketing PR, and I said, yeah. is it is it possible you guys are gonna make this Axis too nice? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, let's kind of come up like, okay, this is getting to be, this is supposed to be your budget friendly one, JT. Yeah. You guys are like, well, let's add more features It's getting, to it's it. getting pretty nice. And it's still, I will say, I mean, the one I built, it's still under under six hundred dollars for like the pro. The yeah, yeah, very the, nice the, the highest end model. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's like you guys keep you like iterating. What is it? What is it uh, better comes better comes standard. Comes standard, right? That's what yep. you guys say. So I mean, that makes sense. Um, what else do people need to know about this? I mean, the stock is a big deal. It's a big part of the story. Yep, new ergonomics, all that kind of stuff. We also have some new offerings with regards to Cerakote, some new Savage camos. We have a Savage Western, a Savage Woodland that you can um, nice. get fitted up on your Axis rifle. We also, on the Pro model that you built the other day, as opposed to just the regular uh, 20, 22, 24 inch sporter barrel, it actually comes with a medium suppressor ready barrel, mm -hmm. um, different lengths based on caliber. It comes 5 ace 24 threaded. That action is also gonna ship with a one piece um, rail system and the full action receiver and barrel is gonna receive a tungsten gray Cerakote with a bronze additive. It's a nice aesthetic look, but also gonna give you a nice corrosion resistant action, help smooth out bolt feel. Yep. Also with regards to bolt feel and things of that nature, we also did a study on bolt handle ergonomics and stuff like that. Even though the Axis isn't the highest price point rifle, mm -hmm. we still wanna bring in features that people really enjoy and want to see on their rifle. So we did a different study on uh, bolt handle ergonomics and actually refreshed the, refresh the bolt handle for this Axis product line. So it's not just that regular ball knob that you had prior. It's got a new uh, geometric pattern to it, kind of like a flattened out hexagon style shape. It's a different shape. It yeah. feels pretty good. 
um, you were saying that it has some other benefits to that yeah. shape as, as far as like maybe working with scopes? Yeah, yeah, we also did a study on some of the most popular um, optics out in the market for hunting rifles and things of that nature. And based on ring height and tube sizing, we actually optimized the bolt handle angle as well as profile so that whether you have a small hand or, or a big hand, you're not driving your bolt up, catching your thumb on your scope, yep. going to feed your bolt in, snagging your hand. It gives you a lot more clearance and honestly, you probably wouldn't pick up onto it until you're a few rounds in, but then you're gonna realize, wow, I don't even need to think about my, my hand bumping my scope or anything yeah. weird like that. Yeah, yeah it's a really cool. neat, just a subtle thing that I think when you shoot the, the rifle at the range today, you'll see that it gets, it's very fluid and I'd say within 20 rounds, you don't think you're shooting an axis anymore. Yeah, you forget. That's, yeah, you, you definitely forget, it's pretty neat. Um, what's your favorite configuration, favorite caliber? Yeah, yeah, so right now, I'd say the Pro One in 308, I think is a pretty neat package. Take, took that to the range a couple times during testing, but we also have a new refresh Woodstock model. It's got um, a Turkish walnut, yeah, with a high varnish really finish, nice, nice stippled texturing. It's They're and really it's high stock. and it's still the wood stock uh, on this new one yeah. is still. The the gun wanted me to talk about it. <laughs> it fell off the wall. Um, yeah. the, the wood stock one is pretty much the same modern shape. Yep. That we're talking about with a little bit more vertical grip angle. Yep. And. I mean, it ha it's kind of surprising. It's not what I expected from a woodstock. Yeah, we didn't compromise on the ergonomics for the woodstock. All that field and user data that we collected to configure the uh, new synthetic stock for the Axis, we also pulled that over into the woodstock. So you'll see the same body lines, the same feature set, the same thumb rest that you have on the shooter's left hand and right hand side, the same drop at comb, same vertical grip angle. And so really the woodstock manufacturing process that we have for this new Axis woodstock, it's really optimized. It's a high end stock. You hold that stock in your left hand and hold the woodstock in your right, mm -hmm. and it has the same feel. It's, it's a really premium stock on a, a nice rifle that we're starting to ship here. Well, and it's something for, uh, if you shoot rifles left-handed, Savage has yep. always been one of those companies for those of us that shoot left-handed, yep. uh, that you're like, yeah, they, they'll stay t taking care of us. Chris, the CEO at dinner last night says, just because you're left-handed doesn't mean you have to be left out, which I'm like, exactly. I love it. I love it. Yep. <laughs> uh, JT, thanks for being all of us, man. Of course, appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, guys, that's it for us from Savage. We'll see you next time on Gun Talk Nation.